Coach, it's obviously not going to be easy replacing Austin, you know, probably the best punter in the school program, but program history. But um, I guess what was the story behind Jack, and what do you think maybe he can offer? You know, um, kind of throughout the year, you know, we just kind of started looking at exactly what we were going to lose, and then you start looking at who's out there, obviously. Um, didn't think there was any high school kids. You know, it's hard to be a punter in college football early. And, you know, Austin kind of went through that same thing his first year. So uh, I think that's kind of when I kind of flipped and said, let's go get a portal kid. And, you know, Jack was, uh, you know, we evaluated him versus a bunch of guys. He's a rugby guy, so it's a little different for me just from the protection standpoint and what he can do. Uh, but he's also been a traditional guy. So uh, that was kind of the thing, really, when you looked at it, you know, um, his expectation is still the same. I mean, he's got to be, he's got to do what, you know, Austin did for us. Uh, will it be the same? Not right now, but I think he's got a really strong leg. Um, he's really receptive to what we're doing. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I think he's going to be really good, you know, and then um, just we got to find that next guy, you know, who's going to who's gonna come in and at least be a backup. If not, we got Barron, who's an athlete that can punt as well. So don't put it behind us, throwing him back there and let him do some stuff. You talked about uh, him being a rugby punter. It's an adjustment for you. How much time? How much extra time have you spent this off season? Yeah, we spent. You know, it's around? we're it's more so um, Jack learning to do our system, and then probably me developing our system into Jack, if that makes sense. You know, because he does. You know, from a traditional punter standpoint, uh, he can hit the ball. It's just he's just inconsistent. Which you know, a lot of guys that are really good rugby punters that want to play in the NFL and this happened, they kind of go through the same transition. So Jack's kind of going through that right now. So yeah, this off season, we just kind of dove into some things in our scheme. Cause we did it a little bit with Austin, Austin rugby, rugby punted also. So we've done it it's just to the scale of, do I want him to do it all the time? Not really cause of how we cover punts. Hey coach, two part question uh, about the running back room. What does it mean to that room and to the offense overall for Taj to return? And then also, can you break down the depth behind him in that room? Uh, obviously, I think you know everyone knows Taj is a valuable piece to this program and the university. Uh, great person, great leader. His leadership's been unbelievable. You know, even you know now that you come back another year, that's helped us the most. Um, <clears throat> so you know what you got in Taj, and then everybody else. You know, Cameron Valdez had some big runs last year. He played some. You know, he spelled Taj. You have to spell him a lot more. We can't. You know, put Taj through what he did last year. Um, so we got to get some of those other guys. But as far as, you know, de there's not, I mean, we're moving guys in and out between Cam. You know, Valdez has been here and he's done it. And then, you know, Anquan Willis, uh, Cam Dickey, and Bryson Donnell. You know, those guys are all, we're seeing who that next guy is, you know, because you got to have three running backs and realistically sometimes four uh, because those guys got to help you on special teams as well. So we're just trying to get those guys all caught up to speed. You know, we know what we got with Taj. Um, we know to an extent what Cam does. Cam's got to do some other stuff well this spring, uh, but he's—it's not that he's not going to try. You know, he was doing that last year. He was—he's—he was basically going towards the right direction. We keep hearing about Cam Dickey. I guess what's so different about him that he offers maybe compared to the other guys? Uh, you know, the thing about it, you know, just when when you watch when you watch him in high school, he does a lot. He's really quick. You know, he's got quick feet. He's strong. He's over 210 pounds already. You know, he should really be, he's a kid in high school that he's here going. So his, his body can take, you know, the load, um, which durability is a huge deal, as you guys know, in a running back. So that part's great. And he's got really good uh, hands. He can run routes. So I think he's kind of like that Swiss Army knife. He can do everything really well. Um, you know, Anquan's a big bruiser. You know, he can get you those tough yards. He's still learning. Uh, he's, you know, he's every day Anquan does something good, and then he does something that I shake my head at. Um, Bryson, same thing. Bryson's solid. He's been solid since he's been here. So, you know, we've got guys we can do stuff with. We just got to get them ready to go. And you had kind of talked at the end of last season about wanting to get Dre involved in punt return, I guess. How's yes. that kind of coming along? And, and oh, who great. else might be kind Dre's of Dre's been great. He's been, the off season, he's been working great. You know, he's been really, uh, he's done a lot of stuff. You know, uh, Jordan Brown, you know, we had already, he was already here. And then, um, you know, adding some of those, you know, TJ West is, you know, he's gotten some. Coy can do it. You know, but yeah, we want we want to put Dre in that um, situation that now he can be a true dual threat. 
kick returner, punt returner as well. Uh, punt returners, you guys know, is a little harder, a little more difficult just because you, if you've never done it, judging a ball in college is a lot different than high school where half the balls hit the ground 20 yards ahead of you and you pick up a hot roll and you go fake one guy out and you score. It's not the same in college. You know, they're going to punt away from you. And he's been working. He's worked all offseason. Coach Johnson's done a great job with him. Um, Juice, in case you guys don't know, but Juice has done a good job of training him up to, to get him more to that stage. And, you know, we're going to keep, we're going to get him a chance to get out there. And you, you might not want to throw him out there this fast, but I guess how does LJ Johnson kind of factor into that? LJ, also? same way. You know, LJ's just young. He's the same thing. He's learned how to catch a college punt. It's a lot different than a high school punt. So that's kind of the biggest, you know, transformation when you get guys, you know, even Dre, you know, Dre, you know, as a kick returner, we really didn't know what we had because he only had like 99 yards or 100 yards, and you know, when he came from Austin B. So uh, we just knew he's fast and he's, he's tough. Um, he gave us, he definitely gave us a shot in the arm, and we'd like to see the same thing. But yeah, there's, you know, LJ and then Micah, same thing. Micah was another guy that, you know, once he gets going, uh, he, he can return punts as well. So there will, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to give all those guys a shot this spring and uh, see biggest thing is just possess the ball, you know, on punts, you know, you, the ones that you're going to, you want to hit a, a ball they miss hit, you know, or they out punt their coverage, which that's what we were good at last year, making the right decision on when to return and when not to, and then not lose field, let the ball hit in front of you and lose 10 to 15 yards. That drives me crazy. Coach, what, can you break down the kicking situation, place kicking and kickoff specials? Uh, you know, we've got a good situation there with Geno coming back, you know, I think uh, Gino kind of solidified himself last year, you know, after the first game, um, you know, when he did, you know, struggle. But I, I think ever, I told you guys that was probably going to happen. Um, <clears throat> but him coming back, Reese is back. Reese got a big leg. You know, we, we had a great kickoff guy, you know, in Reese. And then, you know, uh, Stone's doing some things as a young kid that, uh, it's going to help us in the long run because he's got a big leg as well. But, you know, we're in a good situation with Gino and Reese being, you know, the games that they played in last year. And obviously, Reese being able, you know, I, I kept saying kicking off. So when you got a guy with a good leg, it really helps you. Coach, kind of on that same vein, it felt like you were able to really scheme it up where you were able to cover off the kickoff really well last year, I guess. Would you attribute that to the scheme or just the personnel effect? Both. Effective? I think both. I think uh, having a kicker that you can do stuff with. You can move the ball around. You, you just don't do the same thing. Helps. And then I thought our guys were, you know, we, we put a, you know, there's a lot of people that will kick away from people. I just don't believe in that. I just think, you you know, you're going to have to defend those guys throughout the game one way or the other. Either they're a great receiver or great running back. So um, there's times, you know, that I think probably sometimes I, I think too much of, you know, either myself or our situation that, I'm not going to back down. We're going to learn how to cover kicks. You know, that's like saying, well, we're not going to play defense. We're just going to back up and play four, four guys deep every time. Let them throw. But we're not going to do that. We're going to, you know, coach is big on being aggressive. And I think we have kids that do that. And I'm going to show confidence in our kids that we can cover kicks. Coach, you mentioned, you know, you know what you got in Taj to that extent. How much does he, you guys limit him during the spring? Uh, in practices and then maybe on Friday when you guys are scrimmaging? I think a lot. I mean, honestly, I think he, Taj is at that stage of his career, you know, where it's my job to, you know, we know we have in Taj. Um, we, the other guys, they've got to prove themselves and they've got to do things. So, yeah, we'll probably take some some of the reps back. That's the biggest thing, I guess. You know, it's no different when they get older in the NFL. You know, you start limiting guys' reps and practice uh, scrimmages, same thing like that. That's where we got to find out what the other guys can do with our one offensive line receivers and quarterbacks. Coach, what have you seen from the end of the bowl game today with the biggest amount of growth? Who's shown the biggest growth? Uh, you know, honestly, this team, from a, from a team standpoint, you know, everyone's getting after it. I think our we've we've had a great offseason. Our strength guys have done great. Uh, then, you know, once starting spring ball, man, we just got it's kind of like these these guys are playing at a little higher sense of urgency. Uh, I love our speed and practice. Um, you know, and I said, I, I think running back wise, and you know, start with that. Same thing. You know, we're we just you got to be you got to be a physical running back to play at this level. You know, you don't have to be the fastest, but you have to have great vision. You got to you know you got to be a tough guy. You got to catch the football in this system, and the same thing in special teams. You know, we put we do practice teams in uh, in spring ball, so we're trying to find which one of these new young guys can help us because that's all about depth. You know, you got you got to get a lot of guys ready to play because there's going to get guys injured, and you know, once you start traveling, you're gonna you're gonna have to get everybody ready. Who is that one player that is making? an impact in the, the, this first couple of weeks? Uh, you know, I don't know that, 
you know, uh, Mo Horn's been great, honestly. I, I've loved Mo's work. Jalen Peoples, both those guys at corners, you know, from last year to this year, they've done some great things. Watching them, for me, special team-wise, you know, you, you always kind of look at who those guys are. You know, we've been fortunate with Plunk, um, you know, and last year's Chief Collins, you know, but you just every year you want somebody, preferably, you know, not, not a scholarship guy, but those two right there, they've, they've really stepped it up this spring uh, from my standpoint, just helping, you know, special teams wise, um, making us better. And so I hope those guys continue. What's your, what's your uh, expectations of the running game this year? You know, now adding, you know, a stronger offensive well, line. Well, I think the offensive line, obviously, that we've got, those guys are really uh, doing a great job. You know, this spring they're pretty physical coming off the ball. I think the other thing that helps is when you got a quarterback like Barron that can spit those, you know, our quick screens out and stuff like that. And then, you know, the guys we've added receiver wise, those guys are they're really good. So I don't I don't see obviously last year I think you guys know that Coach Kelly, I, I'll say it and until I'm no longer coaching, I thought he did a great job as an offensive coordinator of totally changing what his philosophy and belief was of we knew what we had and that's all we had and we, we, we had to do things that it wasn't comfortable for us, you know, it's not something that we did. And I thought he did a great job, honestly, of saying, hey, you know, we're going to run the ball. Well, at Texas Tech, when you run the ball like that's never happened. You know, we're doing it, you know, 35, 55 times a game. And uh, with really, you know, one, you know, two guys, you know, so um, really one with Taj. So that's, I think, we're going back to being able to sp uh, spread people out, you know, especially with Mason Thorpe, you have a tight end, a weapon like that. You know, John Carlos is another great addition. He's another one that, you know, that's going to really help us. But, you know, you get back to spreading the field up, it's going to make Taj's runs and Cam or other running backs, their runs a lot easier when you're not having to load the box and beat guys and run over guys. You know, that's the thing I think that with our offensive line right now and the new additions at receiver and tight end have helped us. Coach, going back to Cameron Valdez, do you feel like that conversation about splitting reps went into this decision for him to take his name out of the transfer portal? Well, he, Cam, you know, honestly, uh, Cam knew that going into it, you know, what, what his role is going to be when Todd stayed. Um, you know, he just, I think he realized, you know, what, you know, I just told him, I said, hey, you go out and see what's out there for you. We want you here. You know, we did. We, did, we didn't want Cam to leave. We want him here. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's this, this, the new world we live in, the portal thing, we got a great thing going here. I think our players know that. And I think that would kudos to Cam to going, you know, I'm not going to get the same thing I've got somewhere else. So um, I think that was really it. At the end of the day, he knew that he'd come back. But we want to get him the ball. Because if you go back and look at every game, he had an explosive run, you know. So we, we just got to we gotta have him do it all the time. And then, go, a couple more. and then going back to the offensive line, how has your relationship with Clay McGuire been since he's gotten here? Oh, he's awesome. You know, he's, Clay's, Clay's a good football He's coached a lot of football. And then you know, I always think it's important when you when you're at a school, you know, when you've got uh, coaches, you know, like Coach Kitley that was here, you know, Jay Sean, guys that have played here, you know, he played here, he coached here, you know, he's he's got a vested interest in this place, so, you know, it's I, I don't think it's anything different, um, you know, than most guys that he loves his school, he loves Texas Tech, he loves Lubbock, so he's going to do whatever he can to to make it work for us. Um, but yeah, you know, you got to be in you got to be in sync with running backs and offensive line because especially protection wise. So we, that's kind of been the thing that we've tried to get our, get our guys doing a better job with uh, this spring. All right, thanks, thanks KP. Thanks, thanks, coach. thanks guys, y'all be good. Yes, so coach, I guess you got a, quite a bit of turnover in your room this year. I guess what kind of presence is it to have CJ Baskerville back for this one season? Uh, CJ is big because of his, uh, you know, he's played a lot. Uh, He's a good leader off the field, you know. He knows the defense and stuff like that, so having him back is huge. I guess I've heard a little bit about Cromwell, what he's been able to do since he got here, and Mo Horn sounded like he had a pretty good offseason as well. I guess mm -hmm. some of those younger corners looking to that you're looking to have them step up in some playing time this year, I guess, how have they looked and what have you seen? Corner wise, uh, the four names that stand out is Mo Horn, um, Braden Lux, obviously, um, Jalen Peoples, and then Devin Cromwell, yeah. So those four, uh, so far has been, I mean, they're going hard, you know. So smart players are physical, you know, they're still learning. But uh, I always think this, in order for you to have a good defense, your corners have to tackle, you know. And those four guys, I think, 
aren't afraid to stick their head up in there, you know, and make plays. When you got Mike Dingle in your room, I guess, how's he been since he moved to Star? And I guess, what's the change there for him? He's still learning. You know, he's a guy that's athletic. Uh, he's fast, so that speed, you know, is big for us. But uh, 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 he's just getting started. So, you know, he still has a ways to go, but uh, he's getting it. No, Coach McGuire, slowly but surely. Sorry. Are you good? Coach McGuire mentioned um, last week about the competition of free safety. Can you break that down from your perspective? Uh, the free safety position right now is uh, Chapman Lewis and Jordan Sanford. You know, so those two, once again, those two guys uh, played a lot last year uh, as true freshmen. Um, you know, they're both athletic. They both can fly around. They both played a lot once again, so they're still learning. But I mean, I mean, but they're making plays, you know. But the, I think our, I think our two deep might be pretty good this season if everybody stays healthy. Good two deep. What about boundary? Boundary safety has been C.J. Baskerville, um, uh, Marcus Maron Edwards, and Jevion Wilcox, who plays uh, field safety as well. You know, so he can do on both. Uh, that's been a great competition as well. My main, our main thing we wanted to do is we just wanted guys to feel like the guy behind me can be just as good, if not better. So when you build that two deep and you know the guy behind me is pretty good, that guy to start now is going to go, you know, a lot harder. So uh, we're we're trying to get that good two deep once again. Like this, what stood out about Wilcox in that role, pushing those guys? Because it feels like he was a pretty highly regarded kid. Yeah, but didn't yeah, get a right. big chance yeah. last year. TCU, he, uh, you know, he's a student of the game. He comes in all the time and watches film. Uh, before we even started out on the field, he was in the meeting room, you know, asking questions. Right when I was on the road recruiting, I would get, you know, all kind of questions from him. So he's just, you know, your old school. I'm gonna study film. You know, loves the game, wants to play. You know, so he just kind of fits what we want. With Chapman and Jordan at the safety spot, I guess, what do you want to see from either of those guys? Kind of make themselves stand out from each other. Well, the guy they're replacing made a lot of plays for us. You know, and so those are some big shoes to fill. And so, number one, I think being a quarterback on the football field and getting us, you know, knowing all the checks and what we're getting to and all that is important. You know, and those guys are getting there, uh, playing the field safety. You know, spot you have to have range. You know, you got to be able to run to the ball. You got to take good angles. You got to be good open field. You know, so that's the next step that those guys need to take at that field safety position. What's the biggest growth you've seen in the room from some of these younger players, and the impact that you want them to have for the season? Uh, the biggest growth I would say is that I think these guys are starting to learn. They know the defense, so now instead of just focusing on what they're doing now, I think they can now look at what the offense is trying to do to them. So that's the next step that I see them taking and we still need to, to keep going as far as understanding what the offense is doing. But I can feel those guys starting to see everything, you know, instead of just what they have. Coach, what's Isaiah Collins been able to do since he got here? It feels like that he was pretty solid in the high school right. film that I saw, but I guess how's the game translated into practice? Same thing. You know, he's 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 low maintenance, high output, goes hard. You know, he has that long body. Um, you know, when you look at him, he does, uh, you know, he's, he weighs like 190, I think. And he doesn't look like he weighs that much, but he does. But just, you know, um, just the way that he like approaches the game, you know, for him to be a freshman and for him to just act the way he acts, he looks like he's like a junior, you, you know, just as well, you know, how he comes in and he works every day. You know, so there's some stuff that we still need to fix as far as running to the ball, you know, and all that. But, but uh, I mean, he's like, you know, a man. You know, he's a man at a young age. What is uh, Brendan Jordan's development line? What's your expectation for him? So that star position is Brendan Jordan, and then you have uh, behind him is A.J. McCarty. Once again, you had that battle, you know, that one-two battle of, you know, each day it seems like one guy may have a better day uh, and the other, but Brennan is getting better. You know, I think he understands it now with this being year two. You know, he's making some plays out there. Um, you know, and once again, when you go from your first spring here, you know, and this is your first time hearing stuff, and now year two, 
now you know what's being called, you can transition now from actually thinking to just playing. And you know, whenever you can just play now, you're obviously going to play what? A lot quicker, faster, and all those things. So. Well, uh, last year when AJ was not playing, was he with scouts or was he actually getting any much reps with in your defense? He was with and, scouts. Yeah. Yeah. Now he started off with us until we, uh, you know, we heard that he couldn't play for the rest of the season, you know. But, but he started off with us, but yeah, he was with the scout team for the rest of the year once what, we found out he couldn't play. What led to putting him at star? I mean, I think he played corner at his last school, so I guess what was kind of the process of moving McCarty to star? And AJ, the strength of AJ is he can actually play all five. But we just felt like with, you know, with the way he moves, you know, he's physical, he can blitz, you know, he, he just kind of fits that star role. And then once again, it gave us a good two deep at each spot. You know, he fits that role for us. How does this defense look in comparison to last year's defense? Um, how does this defense look compared? It's, it's too soon to tell. You know, I think you, you lost um, a lot of experience. Uh, but with you lost, with what you lost in experience in my room, I think you've gained um, knowledge, um, physicalness. You know, I think as a group, as a whole, you know, I think our guys um, are going to fly around and hit people. You know, so I feel pretty good about that. Um, and just, you know, like I said, just their knowledge of understanding of watching those guys from last year play and sitting back and learning from those guys. And then coming back for another season and knowing, watching their mistakes and then learning from their mistakes. I was going to kind of ask sort of a similar question. You lost Malik, Rayshad, Tyler Owens, Rabbit mm -hmm. as, a, as a defensive backs coach. How, how much, how big a challenge is it to uh, replace that much experience? Well, as a defensive back coach, it's challenging no matter who you have. So, I mean, just get used to it, right? And so, you know. For me, it's all about guys understanding what they're doing, uh, and then playing, you know, hard and fast, you know, and uh, the physicalness. I still go back to looking back at the last two seasons. You want your corners to be more physical than what we were, you know, and whether that's getting off blocks, whether that's, you know, for the run game or whatever it may be, you know. So I feel like with this group, I think we have some physical corners. Coach, I know you can't mention specific recruits right now, but just in general, what's it been like recruiting at Texas Tech so far? Uh, I love it, you know. I mean, whoever said you can't recruit uh, at Texas Tech don't know what they're talking about, you know, because you can't recruit. Um, but it's built off, you know, once again, you got a head coach, you know, that makes it easy for you, right? Because, you know, he's excited, wants to be here, you know. we. We, it, we, we put a huge emphasis on recruiting, you know, so whenever you have that, right, it's easy to recruit to a place to meet, right? When it's important from the top down, then uh, you obviously have a chance to be pretty good at it. So, you know, for me, right, we, want, we, we, we look for what we look for as far as our recruits. And then once we identify, you know, what we want and who we want, I think we do a good job as a staff of the whole staff recruiting those kids. So whenever I think you have a player at any position that feels like you got a whole staff that's recruiting you, then you know that you're what? You want to be there, obviously, you know? Time for one or two more. Um, I was going to say, uh, Rabbit has gotten a whole lot of positive reviews mm -hmm. from scouts and whatnot since the end of last season. Uh, since you've coached in the NFL defensive backs, what, what do you feel like Rabbit's future, his potential is, and, and what, what has allowed him to be in the position that he's in now? You, you know, Rabbit future, sky's the limit with Rabbit because, you know, Rabbit's going to do most things right. You know, he's going to um, spend the extra time watching film. You know, I thought going from his junior year to his senior year, he was, he was a, uh, his leadership off the field for the group went to a whole nother level. You know, I think he learned how to talk to his teammates better, you know. Um, I think he learned how to talk to us better as a staff. Um, I think his understanding of the defense 
and more importantly is understanding of what the offense was doing improve. And I just think from a recruiting standpoint and then even the guys that we have coming back because Rabbit was a model last year. So by him having the success he had, he's having thus far, I think, makes it easier for me, for the guys in my room now to look at what Rabbit did and say, okay, well, Rabbit listened to Coach Yates, listened to Coach McGuire, you, you know what I mean? He listened to Coach DeRuiter and did what those guys asked him to do. And now look at his success, you know? So he's kind of like the one that I think my room is going to take after um, with things like the way he was on the field. You know, Rabbit practiced well, you know, he practiced hard. So the way Rabbit plays, was also the way that he was, you know, every day, you know. So he flew around to the ball, he made plays. So that makes it easier for me now this year, like I said, because guys that were in that room watched him practice and they said, okay, okay, right, so that's how we have to practice. Is he uh, comparable in any way to Orlando Skandrick since Skandrick wasn't a real big guy either? Yeah, you know, Skandrick was more of a, a corner, which Rabbit can't play corner. Uh, speed is about the same. Uh, you know, I'd probably say very similar, you know, very similar. Anything else? Right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, 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 Thanks. Appreciate it.